Snooki reminds me of the series finale of Lost. Well, matter of fact, her vagina reminds me of the series finale of Lost. Because 10 million people have seen it. Everyone in that show was dead. And everyone's disappointed. You never saw it? Fight the power, man. Good for you. That show broke my heart. Everyone was dead, and then he laid with a dog. I was like, oh, Matthew Fox. Damn it. But anyway, actually, I, I love music, and I know most people do. But my favorite piano, unlike a lot of people, my favorite instrument, excuse me. <laughs> boom goes the dynamite. Um, my favorite instrument is the piano. And, and like everyone, everyone thinks, who's the best piano player? And I'm like, Beethoven. But see, I, ha I think stupid things a lot. I'm like really good at stupid shit. And you know, when you talk during like someone on stage, I don't care if you like it or don't like it, but it's like, God damn, man, you look like Gary Coleman, shut up. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I mean, it's like, <laughs> got me all like fucked up but no like <laughs> Beethoven Beethoven's like the best piano player but I think stupid shit and I'm just thinking to myself thank God Beethoven wasn't a singer because he was deaf so if Beethoven sang you know what he would sound like a lot like this <clears throat> Duh! I haven't told that in a while and like <laughs> One of my closest friends was like, hey, man, you know what you should do to eat shit? Tell that Beethoven joke. Thanks, John. <sighs> I, I told it wrong. That's why it's fucked up, but, you know, whatever. God, that red light can't come on soon enough. <laughs> anyway, oh, how convenient. Um, anyway, folks, enjoy the rest of the show. <laughs> Good night. Keep it going for the Cragger. All right, the next comic coming to the stage. We'll keep this thing going. Please put your hands together for the very funny. See him every Wednesday night at the Nun House Improv Troupe. Please put your hands together for the Steve Marcinowski. Steve Urkel. This guy. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. Cause it's not racist because he's got a best friend that's black. It's not racist. Give it up for that guy. Wow. Wow. Um, what was I going to say tonight? Wilmington, how are we doing? Nostry, we feel like we're having a good time tonight. Yes. Put your hands together. Oh, my God. I love Wilmington. I love partying here. Uh, ladies, where are the ladies at tonight? Yes. You girls are having a good time. Um, <laughs> you have some weird tactics, though. Last night, I got to tell you. Um, guys have wingmen, and women, you have, I don't know what you call them, but the worst mistake you can do is choose a gay guy to be your, your wingman. This happened to me last night. This guy comes up to me, and he's like, see my friend over there? She, told, she said she's going to rape you tonight. Uh, I looked at her, and I was like, which one? And he, I was like, yeah, that, that would definitely be rape. That's, that's definitely rape. That's I'm unwilling. Yeah. No. Well, what balls? Like, guys can't do that. We can't have our wingmen go up to some chick. We're like, hey, see my friend over there? No, 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 the guy who's 400 pounds. He said he's totally going to rape you tonight. You down with that? You down with that? We can't do that. Get balls to someone who does, though. I play... It's creepy, huh? You know what's creepy? I play this game at work. I call it because I have, I have a horrible vision. I, I, we call this game a 10 or 13. 
and I can't see I can't see women from far away. And when they're coming down the aisle, we go, "All right, is she a is she a smoking hot ten, or is she thirteen years old?" <laughs> We can't tell. It's Mc- yeah. <laughs> it's McDonald's that's doing it. It's McDonald's. <laughs> I um. I am. I'm making a big move coming up. I'm about to go in the road. I'm about to go in the road with Steve Melia. We're gonna see 162 Yankees games. Yeah. <laughs> I know, because I'm from Boston, too. I know. But here's the thing. I don't really care about baseball. <laughs> baseball is boring to me. It really is. It's like the romance. If you, if you had to put it in a movie, it would be like the romantic comedy of a movie. It's just long and drawn out and boring. I'm a fan of football. Yeah. Yes. Football is the action movies of sports. They have cheerleaders. There's explosions when they score a touchdown. Yeah. I don't know where I was going with that. I uh, was talking a lot about red lights. No, I was talking a lot about how I was a dick earlier to women and their, their gay wingmen. And I came off as an asshole. I realized that. Because I wanted to let you know I'm really a nice guy. And I know this because women tell me I'm a nice guy. (laughs) You know you're a nice guy when a chick tells you, she's like, you're a really nice guy. No one's ever toweled off my stomach when they were done before. (laughs) Hey, thanks a lot. My name's Steve Marcinowski. Thanks a lot, Nashi. You're great. Timmy Shero. Steve Marcinowski, everybody. He never cleans off my stomach when he's done. What? Did that sound gay? Sounded gay when I heard it come out of my mouth. All right, this next guy coming to the stage always is funny on Wednesday nights, again with the Nuthouse Improv Troupe. If you've never seen him, please put your hands together for Mr. Tim Boise. Hey, guys. Hey, Daddy. This, I can't be your father. <laughs> Just kidding. It's funny because he's black. Ah! Shut the fuck up, Cameron. I got the microphone now, bitch. I'm telling jokes. Who else is high? Yeah! I'm stoned. This guy, this, you, this guy right here is high as shit because he's white and pale and his eyes are like Japanese. I swear to God, if he talked, he'd be like, Tosh on drugs. No, seriously, I like smoking pot a lot. But it's starting to turn on me. Like it does to most people, you know. Some people, I don't smoke anymore, man. It makes me paranoid. And I'm starting to realize what that is. Because one of my favorite things to do in the morning is to take a bong rip and watch Saturday morning cartoons. And I really used to like fantasizing about being a superhero, you know. And then the pot turned on me and it was like, what the fuck would a stoner do with superpowers? And then my pot mind started to psychoanalyze it, like, you're right, what would I do with superpowers? <laughs> I started to get, like, a panic attack. I was like, I don't know what I would do. Uh, uh, well, what superpower would I use? It's like, well, the most obvious one for flying, flying. I couldn't fly. I can barely fucking drive when I'm high. <laughs> I live a block from the Burger King, and I always end up in fucking Leland across the bridge when I try to get there. I take a bong rip and try to fly off and just like. (laughs) The best part is I'm only this high off the ground, just staring at the clouds. This is cool. I like it. 
And it's like the most uneventful flying you've ever seen in your life. Because like I said, I'm only an inch off the ground, so I'm just kind of... Let's go. <laughs> I got it. And then I start to think, well, what do you do with flying superpowers? You fucking save people, don't you? I've been at Cape Fear Community College for four years. Saving people. Not my f- smart things. Not real good at them. A pothead who can fly into an accident. Me coming into an accident with superpowers. Like, oh, I'll save you. I'll fly in. And you got the worst landing ever. It's just... <laughs> Who's hurt? <laughs> oh, you <yeah. laughs> No. And then I fly back home. So I couldn't be a superhero. I'm too much of a pothead. But do you know what would be cool? If the Predator smoked pot. Because you know that motherfucker would start a reggae band. And that would be the hottest shit on this planet and probably three others. Because they travel through space. They're aliens. Do you know that? It's the, the, the title for the movie is so misleading. Alien versus Predator. And you want to see like a Martian with big black eyes versus like a T-Rex. But it's not. It's two aliens. Why don't they just call it like Alien versus Other Alien? That's a movie I would know what I'm getting into. You know, like I'm going to get super stoned for that one and watch two aliens duke it out with Adrian Brody's big fucking nose. It was like Alien versus Alien versus Toucan Sam. (laughs) I just got the red light. It means I'm going to fuck some shitty whores. Thanks, guys. Peace. Tim Boise, everybody. Yes. Funny. You guys having fun? Yeah. Awesome. You ready to keep it going? Yeah. Here we go. This next guy coming to the stage. Uh, you can see him down here every Thursday. Today. Please put your hands together for Mr. Zach Burke. Uh, every Thursday up in this motherfucker. Hang on, hang on. Your pants are fly as shit, dude. God dang. What's up, everybody? Ooh, I feel we're, we're really packed in here. I mean, you know, why don't we all just sit on the stage? Uh, I, uh, I took a trip recently to Greenville. I'm, I live in Wilmington. Uh, it's, it's the happening place, but I took a trip to Greenville to see my friends. Anyone? Greenville? Greenville? Am I not saying it right? Greenville? Uh, one, of, one of my favorite things to notice in Greenville, or Vol, whoever we uh, are talking to, homeless people. Wilmington, Wil- Wilmington has this problem of homeless people, and I guess the rest of the world does too. Go figure. I, uh, w- w- what I've noticed is homeless people, there's two kinds now. There's two kinds. There's the first kind. There's the slutty homeless. God, you're such a homeless slut. You're going to walk up to anybody and ask anybody for money. God, you're going like, to work the same story to everybody you see. What a whore. I mean, come on, just, how you doing? Yeah. What's well, happening? Okay. <laughs> there's also, there's also the, the clingy, the Klingon homeless. Just like, just like women who will a- ask anybody, there's the Klingon. There's a Klingon homeless guy or woman who will ask you any kind of story. And it's, I mean, Paul Bunyan, tall tale shack kind of shit. Oh, my mother is down the street. And she needs a bus ticket. And we need gas. So they're selling gas tanks at $8 in the dollar store. Can you help me out? Dude, come on. Just ask me for the $3 for the rest of the dime bag that you're trying to get. And let's cut the chase, okay? I don't have all kinds of time for this shit. Uh, well, fantastic, guys. You've never been around homeless people. Let me clap for you guys. Uh, you will never know how to handle them. I uh, I also uh, was here last Thursday, I guess, for that uh, Dirty Mega dance party 
She was wiling out. Anybody go to that? One guy and no women. Yeah. Fuck. Terrible evening. <laughs> I was actually, I was actually uh, accosted in the bathroom. Okay, this is a men's bathroom. I'm standing there. Yeah, let me turn around. Because I was doing, you know, I was just standing there with my dick in my hand. I wasn't busy at all peeing. Guy comes in, starts asking me for all kinds of drugs. Because it's a crazy dubstep. It's crazy. It's wild. I mean, you know, topless, apparently, guys. And, I don't know, drugs were flowing freely. Guy comes in. Hey, man, you got ecstasy? You got any, you got the uppers, the molly, the good shit? I'm like, dude, look what I'm doing. I'm peeing. My hand's on my wiener. What am I going to stop? I, all right, let me drop what all I'm doing and just, just look for drugs for you. Uh, you know, I'm just going to you know, stop my process, pee all over the place because I have to find new drugs. And I don't know where I was going. That was terrible. Don't ever ask someone to find you anything while they're peeing, women or men. Come on, guys. Give me a minute. Um, fucking A. Um, speaking of fucking A, curse words. Curse words uh, should never scare us as a society. Uh, one example, I, I mean, uh, curse words, just let it go. Just let it go. If, oh, God, I got the light and shit. I, I don't want to talk to you guys anymore. All right, guys. Fucking A. Zach Burke, everyone. Zach Burke. Fuck it. Fuck it. I don't want to talk to you guys. Fuck it. I'm going to get up here and not talk to you guys. Awesome. You guys ready? Are you ready? You don't look ready. You ready? Yeah. Are you nervous? No? Oh, is that right? All right, here we go then. What's your name? What's your name? Emily. Oh, hey, Emily. Yeah, I remember you. How's it going? Doing all right? Right on, man. Me and Emily have a thing. Uh, never mind. All right, here we go. I'm glad you came back out, sweetie. Um, if I knew who was coming up. Oh, yeah, five comes after four. Please put your hands together with a very funny guy, Mr. Jeff Henderson. Who was here last week? All right. <laughs> Every so often, somebody will say to me, they'll go, hey, Jeff, do you speak Spanish? And I'll say, yes, I can. Check this out. No. <laughs> See? <laughs> if Mickey Mouse was real, he'd be scary as shit. It's like a nine-foot rodent. What's wrong with kids? <laughs> I recently ate some Korean veal, also known as a puppy. <laughs> if you're undefeated and hide and seek, does that mean people hate you? <laughs> you know, sometimes when I'm sitting in traffic, I like to wave somebody into traffic, you know, if they're trying to get in, it's a long line. And they probably think I'm a real nice guy and being considerate, but I'm not, because I know there are some crazy motherfuckers out there. And if I don't let you out and the guy behind me does, I don't want you following me home, killing my ass. <laughs> that went better than I thought it would. <laughs> I thought that was going to eat shit. My favorite color is clear, you know, I like it because it has so much potential. It can be anything. I like the internet, you know why? Ask me why. Okay. 
Because you can sit there all day, drink beer, and apply for jobs. <laughs> and they don't know, you know. It's a lot better than going and talking to people. I like to go to China and start a Jimmy Buffett cover band and then tour under the name Asian Buffett. Lesbians remind me a lot of high school girls because they wouldn't fuck me either. So, <laughs> not a whole lot of difference there. If it wasn't for gravity, I wouldn't drop shit. I'll delete that one. Hmm. I had a girlfriend a while back. I thought she had a really great personality, but it turned out I was wrong. So I had a whole lot of fat sex for no reason. Oh. <laughs> hmm. If a retarded midget shows up late for something, is it okay to call him a little tardy? Hmm. I got one more. What do y'all think about a tampon called Beaver Dam? Is that marketable? Well, thank y'all very much. I appreciate it. My name is Jeff Henderson. Uh, Jeff Henderson, everybody. Yes. Right on. All right. Next guy coming to the stage. Uh, just got married. Be kind to him. Uh, did you say owl? Did you say? <laughs> or did you say Wow. Al, yeah. It hurts, doesn't it? It does. Please put your hands together for the very funny Mr. John Feltz. Very good. All right. How many of us here live in Wilmington? Yeah. We love it here, don't we? We love living here. We especially love it when our friends come to visit us here because that's when we do all the things we want them to think that we do all the time, you know? It's like, hey, what's going on, friend from Winston-Salem? Welcome to Wilmington. First thing we're going to do is eat in front of a waterfront restaurant because that's how we eat all our meals. We can't possibly consume food unless we're looking at a body of water. Downtown, riverfront, doesn't matter. Are you telling me that in Raleigh you eat in buildings surrounded by walls? <laughs> Nonsense. Uh, then, uh, you know, we're going to have a beach bonfire because it's Friday. Just your standard run-of-the-mill operating Friday procedure. Why? How do you stay warm in Asheville? Not have beach bonfires? We're going to spend all day at the beach because we totally take advantage of that. It does mean that we spend all of our time at the beach because we live here. Yes, it's true. I'm going to surf because that's cool. And that surfboard in my you know, room totally gets used. It's not just there for looks, totally. We're going to spend all day at the beach. We're going to hit up the downtown nightlife, maybe a little bit of Nut Street Comedy, a little rooftop bar, level five. We're going to wake up on Johnny Mercer's Pier, watch the sunrise, do the same darn thing the next day. <laughs> oh, man. Living in Charlotte must suck. <laughs> well, that's just how we do it here. Our life is your vacation, right? I watched a video for Teach Me How to Dougie. I didn't learn nothing. Nothing is more embarrassing than having your wife walk in and you practicing how to Dougie to YouTube, you know? Teach me how to Dougie. That song should not be called Teach Me How to Dougie. It should be called Watch Black People Dance and Wonder What the Hell the Dougie Is. All right? I asked my black friend, Will, I was like, Will, which one of them's doing the Dougie? He's like, Feltz, they're all doing the Dougie. I felt, like, I felt like Robin Williams and Hook when all the Lost Boys were eating food. And I was like, where's the food? They're like, they're all eating food. I was like, I don't... I don't see it. <laughs> yeah, for the hook reference, yeah! yeah! That's right. I'm trying to quit smoking, that's not easy, you know? What else are you supposed to do after sex? Talk? No. Can't talk. But sandwiches, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I didn't think I got married, man. Come on. That's just so that could follow that. Just kidding. Just kidding. Plus, I still haven't lived out my smoking fantasy yet, which is putting my cigarette out on someone, you know? 
Excuse me, sir, there's no smoking in this establishment. Now you're smoking. I have a really uh, hippie liberal friend. She's like, America sucks because uh, we consume so much and pollute and we commit uh, corporate greed and America's the worst place to be and there's no other worst place in the world. And I was like, I- I'm sorry, have you heard of Africa? <laughs> All right. As the black guy sits down in the front, this is embarrassing. <laughs> Look, people, I saw Tears of the Sun, Hotel Rwanda, and Blood Diamond all on the same night, okay? Africa sucks, all right? I am not going. Cancel vacation plans to Africa. My friend was like, uh, hey, uh, you know, you really shouldn't say that about Africa. It's a beautiful country with beautiful people and beautiful cultures. We have our own problems here, too, you know. Yeah, not genocide, all right? I'll take a broken healthcare system over genocide any day, all right? Well, anyway, I got the light. I appreciate y'all letting me tell jokes. Y'all have a wonderful night. Thank you. Mr. John Phelps. Yes. Man. All right. You guys having a good time? Got a little thing here. Okay. This, this next guy coming to the stage, this is his very first time doing stand-up. This is this is is uh this is exactly what, this is what this room is designed for. It's a safe environment for people to come up here and fall flat on their fucking face. Are you guys ready? Please put your hands together, and I know he's going to be a good do a good job. Please put your hands together. He's down here all the time supporting the room for Rafe. That's it. that. Give it up for Timmy. Give it up for John Feltz who came up before me. Timmy was actually wrong. I have gone up before and I bombed, so I'm trying not to repeat that one. But um, before I get started, are there any black people in the room? Yeah, we got one right here. Good looking out, bro. Good looking out. Thank you. It's going to get a little nasty. I just want to warn you. My friend Ben said that I should do a disclaimer before I start and say that it might get racist. Then I said, I turned it around to him. I said, no, you're racist. You're trying to tell me black people don't understand context? No, I can't drop an N-bomb. And I will in a minute. Hold on. I'm looking at my beer because I got my notes on there. I don't care. Unprofessional. It's open mic. I'm going to do it. Before we get started, um, anybody read the newspaper? Any newspaper? Doesn't matter what you read. Wall Street Journal, New York Times. You gotta fucking read the papers. Come on. If you don't read the paper, you're a poser. Stop watching the television news. It's garbage. But I do love the way that they always say, um, they'll try to present a statement in the form of a question. Like, um, are we living in a post-racial America? Mm, no. <laughs> you know? I know for a fact that racists are walking around, living here. Um, my mom fucking walks this earth, so I know that fucking racist is right here. She's the most vile, no, she's really the most vile person I've ever met in my life. And for the longest time I was thinking, like, is she really racist or is she just a fucking dickhead? And, uh, gotta go with the former on that one. Fucking racist, fucking homophobic, and she's a Republican. I'm not saying that all racists are Republicans, I'm just saying most of them are Republicans. Um... Let's see, where am I at? Yeah, no, my mom is fucking racist. It's funny. She came home from work one day. She was, like, pissed off. She's like, oh, my God, Rafi, this guy said that I was fucking uh, Mexican. I was like, why? She's like, you started speaking Spanish to me. I was like, we didn't call you a Mexican. She said, um, he fucking implied it, though. And I was like, oh, okay, all right. Mom, we're Filipino. We're fucking the Mexicans of Asia. That's what happens. I mean... <laughs> Invaded by the Spaniards. <laughs> fucking, everyone's Catholic. I was like, y- and you work at Walmart. You're a fucking Mexican of Asia, Mom. This is how it goes. Thank you. The funny thing about Asians, though, is that um, they're like, they don't really respond to racism shit. Like, you can say, like, oh, ching chong, blah, 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 and they won't even say anything. They'll smile at you. But... When it comes down to it, they are fucking racist as shit. It's only against other fucking Asians, though. Like, I used to work with this Chinese guy, always busting chops on fucking people. That, um, he's like, 
Oh, it's fucking Chinese, bitch. Oh, fuck, I said she was Chinese. Never mind. Rewind. So, this fucking Japanese bitch, so stuck up. He's like, Korean trash people. Not cool, Raph. Not cool. And, um, he's, so I'm working with him one day. He's telling me this fucking... He's always telling hero stories, though. Like, when he's blowing up, he's like, oh, my God. I wish you would have been there, dude. It was so fucking awesome. So he's at the Asian market one day. This, ch- this Japanese chick is fucking working the register. Her boyfriend comes in, Thai guy. And then he's like, oh, my God. He's like, started busting her chops. And then he, went, he ripped into the fucking dude. He's like, this is what he said. And I actually had to pause because, like, I didn't even think it was real. He's like, oh, my God, you fucking Japanese stuck-up bitch. And you fucking small dick Thai fuck. I was like, what? He's like, small dick Thai fuck. Like, oh. First of all, that's kind of weird because, like, you speak really bad broken English. Does he, does he also speak such bad broken English that he understands what you said? And then second, I never knew the Chinese were so well endowed. You hide it so well behind that stereotype. But, um, yeah, the first time that I actually did learn about racism, because I grew up in the South, this was always a funny thing. Where are you from, Shug? Sack up, bitch. Ask me what fucking Chinese I am. You know, I'll tell you, Filipino. But, um... So, actually, the first time I did learn about racism, though, was when I was in seventh grade, and this girl comes up to me, and she says, you a nigga. I was like, first of all, to say how fucking racially charged that word is and how fucking um, uh, intense it is, I got pissed off at her. So, what the fuck you call me? She was black. I was affecting, you know, trying to communicate. Anyway, she said, you ain't white, is you? And I was like, no, I'm not. I'm only half. She's like, you black to them. You a fucking nigger. I was like, wow, holy shit. I never thought about it like that way until I moved to Hawaii. And then guess who the fucking niggers are there? White people! (laughs) And black people, too. They don't really like you guys. I don't know what's up with that. You don't even live there. Anyway, thanks a lot. It's my time. My name is Raph. (laughs) Keep it going for Raph Taylor! Awesome, awesome. All right. Next guy coming to the stage. Uh, please put your hands together uh, for the very funny Mr. Menashe Magarero. Yes. How y'all doing tonight? Doing well? Yeah. Ready to laugh your asses off? Ready to do that? Oh, yeah. That's a weird saying, isn't it? Laughing your ass off. Like, it's kind of a weird saying. Like, no one's ever... I've never laughed at, like, a joke. I've never been like, Oh, man. Uh, Lindsay Lohan is a whore. Like, wait, 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 wait. wait. Oh, yeah. I thought I'd lost you. Like, I've never, I've never, I've never done that before. Um, but it's a weird saying, like, laughing your ass off. Like, I wonder, though, like, what it would look like, like, laughing your ass off. Would it just kind of, like, drop off? Like, is it like you just be shopping for groceries and you just kind of misplace and you have to trace your steps back? Like, oh, I thought I lost the Harris Teeter. I might have to go back and see if it's still there. Is it like that? Or is it like, is it like violent? Is it like an explosion with, like, shrapnel and collateral damage and, like, police reports and, like, Michael Bay saying cut? Like, is, is that... Is that what that is? Is that what the process entails? I just not really sure. Um, let's address the elephant in the room. Uh, my voice does not match this whole racial thing I got going on. Let's just address that. Um, and I get I get shit for it. it. It's cool. I understand it. I mean, no one hears my voice and says, "I bet he talks back to his mother." Like no one, no one ever thinks that. You know, no one's like. Uh, <laughs> No one, no one's like, I bet he defaces school property in his spare time. I bet he does that. Like, no one ever thinks that. Like, my voice is only good for, like, selling mattresses on, like, 
TV and like reassuring like white supporting leads on like CBS dramas. Like that's what my voice is good for. Um, stereotypes are fun, right? Especially when they're racist. Oh, those are cool. Um, it's weird, like, growing up, you know, like, my friends, like, both black and white were like, you know, man, like, you're not black enough. Which is weird because, like, with white people, like, y'all, like, don't ever have to prove your race. Like, you don't have to, like, no white person's like, dude, I swear I'm white. I turned my library books in on time. <laughs> Haven't you seen when I do that? Yeah. Um, so, uh, <laughs> let's talk about homeless people. Uh, this is uh, not really recent. This is in high school. I was on the bus. I was going back home. And um, this homeless guy, he was uh, just behind me. I didn't really see him. I was just hanging out with my friend. And he just kind of tips me on the shoulder. And I'm like, look back. And he, he has these animal crackers. And like, I don't know how he got these animal crackers to be so fucked up. Like, it was just the nastiest animal crackers I've ever seen. And he kind of just nudged me like, hey, do you want to eat these? Yeah, I'm homeless, but I've got animal crackers. Let's snack up, motherfucker. Like, I was like, no. And it was nice of him. It was nice of him that he offered to rape me in such a nice tone. Like, hey, do you like animal crackers and waking up places you don't remember? Um, it was a sweetheart. It was a sweetheart. It was really nice. Um, it's weird when, um, it's weird when uh, people, like, they say they don't want to give money to homeless people. And, and, and their excuse is, is that I do service. It's like, why don't you want to give, like, money to homeless guys? Because I do volunteer work. I'm like, try giving that as an excuse to a homeless guy. Like, hey, man, which, can I have some money? No, actually, um, I volunteer. Oh, oh, okay, that's, that's great. As long as Tim and John are getting fed at the homeless shelter, don't, don't worry about me. No, I'm, I'm good. I'm going to stick this hypodermic needle in my eye, but it's okay with you because you volunteer, asshole. Um, I feel like that's how that shit goes. Um, how much time do I have left? I feel like I didn't budget this shit very well. Yeah, trying to. Um, all right, one last joke. Do you think Jesus ever had to, like, warm up before, like, he did miracles? Do you think, like, did he warm up or did he just go straight into it? Like, I feel like he would have to warm up, you know, like, kind of like comedians do. I'm just, like, imagining, like, Jesus is like, hey, guys, what's up, Calorie? What's up? How are y'all doing and stuff? What's up with Samaritans? Where are they? Where are they? They're, they're helpful and handy and stuff. Am I right? Am I right? What's up with... Immaculate conception. That's weird. That's how I imagine that shit goes. Do you think he did like a sound effect though when he did his miracles? Like, have, you, have you guys seen like the televangelists? Like they have like a sound effect. Like they go, ah, they do that. Like because it, it's not a miracle if they don't do that. Do you think Jesus did that as well? Like he's just like talking to his friends. He's like, hey guys, you know, like blind guy shows up. He's like, ah, his disciples are freaking out. Like, oh shit, you are awesome. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, that's my time. I uh, appreciate it, guys. Keep it going for Menage. What's up, guys? Come on in. Grab a seat. Awesome. We were just talking about Jesus. <laughs> I, think if, I, think if, I think if Jesus was around, don't you think he would have worn Tevas? They're comfortable as shit. Am I wrong? No, I'm not. All right, please put your hands together for the next comedian coming to the stage. Uh, he is uh, a really good supporter of this room, and uh, he deserves every ounce of laughter that your little hearts can desire. Mr. Brian Piccolo. Yeah, bring him up. Uh, what's up? This is going to be fucked up. Um, so I was, uh, I was masturbating to toddlers and tiaras the other night. And I was, like, I was like, is that wrong? Is that wrong? Is it pronounced tiaras? I think that's wrong. That's awkward. Um... But it's weird, like, I was watching, uh, I was watching TV and one of those uh, commercials came on to, to feed the homeless children in other countries. And it was weird because the guy saying it had a Spanish accent. And he was like, that's right. 
You're <laughs> you can feed these hungry ch children overseas for just pennies a day. And I was like, I have to feed them with my penis? What? <laughs> and it was almost like he answered back. He's like, that's right. Your pennies can go directly from your pants into their mouths. <laughs> Girlfriend just broke up with me uh, last week, two weeks, I don't know, um, doesn't matter. But uh, it's awkward because I'm, I'm kind of worried that I may not meet anybody else, like, because I have a really nice cock. <laughs> and, and girls don't want the nice cock, they don't want the cock next door. They want, like, the bad boy cock with the motorcycle helmet and scars all over it. And see, the funny thing about that is there's no punchline to that joke. I just wanted to say cock next door. <laughs> Speaking of awkward things, I think it's awkward when people, like, show you pictures of their kids. I hate that. Like, because uh, you get trapped into it. Like, this lady was like, hey, do you want to see a picture of my son? And I was like, sure, I guess. I don't know. Um, He's like 14. And I'm like, what am I supposed to say? Oh, yeah, he's pretty hot, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but even weirder and more awkward than that is when people show you pictures of their ugly baby. <laughs> and you have to, like, try to think of something to say. Like, oh, yeah, how old is she? Three? Oh, wow. How old is the shovel she was beaten in the face with? <laughs> I have a day job. I, uh, I learned something very valuable at my day job. Um, well, actually, I wondered this. I wonder if the reply all button should be renamed the, oh, shit, I'm fired, huh, button. <laughs> it's an email joke. <laughs> sex offenses are bad, because everyone knows sex defenses win sex championships. I wonder if the guy who invented the umbrella was really just a shitty public speaker and wanted to call it Brella. That's good. That is a good joke. That's a great joke. If you, uh, if you ask someone how they're doing and they say horrific, that means bad. Unless you're asking a pimp. I, uh, yeah, I had a religious experience the other day. I was looking at a painting of Jesus, and I saw a piece of toast. <laughs> this is wonderful. That's all my time, you guys. Thank you. Brian Piccolo, everybody. All right, we're going to keep this thing going. Uh, this next guy coming to the stage, uh, he is also down here at least four nights a week. Please put your hands together for Mr. Cliff Cash. Did you see me run down here? I fucking ran down here. God, I'm nervous. I get nervous every time I get up here. I have a hard time looking at the crowd. I usually look down the whole time. Um, oh, shit. That's all I got. That's all I got. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was my only joke, though. Now I just got to talk for three minutes and 40 seconds. Fuck. Has anybody got sunglasses on inside the fucking building inside at night? In the winter time at night inside? Is anybody doing that tonight? Because there's no punchline. I just want you to fucking leave. Now. With your affliction shirt on. You fucking douchebag. Nice chin strap. How do you get it so thin? It's like an eyebrow around your jawline. You're awesome. Not. I always feel like if I ever get up here and just fucking blow ass, 
that it's still okay because I could just get one of those shirts with the eagle on it and cursive writing and just like tour with Dane Cook. You know, just walk around stage. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I hope you come back as a tree and then we'll put the Bible on you. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Fuck you, Dan Cook. I don't care how many friends you have. Nobody even gets on MySpace anymore. You suck. You too, Sarah Palin. God damn it. You ever played, uh, you ever played board games with somebody that's just dumb as shit? Ever? Has anybody ever played the game Catchphrase where you pass the thing around the circle and it gives you a, a phrase and you have to make your buddies guess it and, and it, if, you, if it lands on you and you run out of time, then you're the shithead? You ever played that game? Yeah. It, should, it should be called Guess Phrase because you don't actually catch anything in the game. But um, You ever played that with somebody who's just really fucking stupid? It's horrible. It like makes you not want to be friends with them anymore. Like, how are you that stupid? You have a fucking driver's license. How are you that dumb? I can't believe I let you watch my dog for a weekend. You are so ridiculous. But like they get the thing and they're like, um, okay, um, uh, eyebrow. And you're like, glasses, contact lens, cornea. And they're like, no, um, if you mix blue and red, you get and you're like, purple. And like, no, no, um, a teddy bear is my favorite stuffed animal. Purple stuffed animal, Barney, Barney the dinosaur. And they're like, you're just guessing and you're all fucking stressed out. And you're like, what is it? And then the buzzer goes off and they're like, oh. You're like, dude, what was it? It was summer camp. You're fucking retarded. (laughs) You know? And then everybody gets mad at you for saying retarded, like you did something wrong. Like, you really are. Like, there's no way that you're not retarded. I want to trade him. Can I trade him? Can I get the guy in the affliction shirt and the guy with the sunglasses in, on inside at night? Can we trade this guy for those two or whatever? Give me a child or a puppy or anybody, you know? I'm not, trying to, I'm not trying to lose this game. But my friends got mad at me for saying retarded. Like, you, that's not politically correct. It's not politically correct. You should be more politically correct, Cliff. Cash amateur comedian you could google me and i was like dude how the fuck am i you know what's retarded what can i say that's that's synonymous everybody know what a synonym is everybody's like yeah i used to um so i'm like what can i say that means retarded but it's more politically correct so now i just say sarah palin i just because Because it's political and it's correct. (laughs) I was trying to do it as a joke and I didn't catch it. That sucked. I'm sorry, Timmy. Are you mad? Did you see that? Thanks. Peace out. (laughs) Cliff Cash, everybody. It didn't actually hit the ground, Cliff. It didn't. No. So you get your normal tea bag at the end of the night. Yeah, the kind we always give each other. Yeah. <laughs> That's gross. That is gross. Oh my God. I can feel it in my jowl, just that. That's salty. <laughs> I, uh, I just, anybody eat pussy? I mean, does anybody? I got, so the lady got mad at me because I used the word vagina one time in my set. I was like, listen, lady, it, it actually, vagina is a very technical term, is it not? I mean, it's like as scientific as you can get. It doesn't even come from like a root word. I mean, if you go way back, it comes from the, from the, uh, from the word vagina. <laughs> which, which actually means the first five seconds taste like urine. <laughs> what? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Eat up. Eat up. Eat up. It's delicious. It goes away. 
It dissolves like a now later. It's delicious. All right. Okay. Let's stop being dirty. All right. Next, next uh, comic on the stage is our first female of the night. Yes, sir. Okay. Here we go. Please put your hands together for Miss Amanda J. To a place of no return. Had to play with fire and get burned. Only way the boy ever gonna learn. Had to lay way in the cut. Till I finally got my turn. Now I'm on top in the spot. So how you doing? Woo! Thank you. Who in here loves their job? Anyone? No one loves their job? Seeing as I am apparently part of a very, very small minority group, I'm going to say I really do love my job. I especially love it when I'm working at 2 in the morning and a really drunk girl and her burlesque dancer girlfriend come in and attack me. This was not a violent attack. Well, it was violent, but it was an okay attack. Because the drunk girl saw my name tag, noticed we had the same first name, and launched herself at me, wrapped her legs around my waist, and said, oh my god, you have to be awesome. Which I'm like, okay. Then her girlfriend came up behind me, grabbed my ass, and said, asked me if I wanted a private show. I think that's a day when you go home satisfied that your job is the best job in the world. No one? No one has this other experience? No one? What do you do? Um, I'm a stripper over at the No, I'm, I work in a gas station, man. I work, I, I, they were trying to talk me to buying beer after hours. That's all. I still got my ass grabbed by a hot chick, though. When? <laughs> no? No? God. Y'all are just not very enthusiastic about my lesbian encounters. No one. Surprisingly, considering it's a, it's a sausage fest in here. You'd think this would be funnier to you. No? Okay. <laughs> um... <laughs> So I was on Facebook the other day, and I, I happened to, you know, I keep a track of people. I stalk them a little bit, just a tiny bit. And I, I had noticed that a friend of mine was going through some marital issues, apparently. And, you know, I commented on his status. And what I got back was that the marital issue is that he doesn't want to have sex with his wife. And I think, think to myself, isn't that kind of the reason you get married in the first place just so someone will have to have sex with you <laughs> even when you're ugly fat smell weird or just are in any way unattractive isn't that why people get married yeah. yes. exactly yeah. that's why my mom did it <laughs> money eh, I don't know that I don't know anyone with money you got money can we be friends where are we going <laughs> oh Whoa, had a pothead flashback. Never mind. That's not funny. That's not funny. <laughs> um, I was also in, in a regular normal day encounter. You know, this creepy ass person came up to me and touched me. I'm not talking like, you know, a brush on the shoulder as they walk by me. No, I'm talking they came up and touched me. You know, I was like, hi, do I, do I know you? Dude was just like, you're so pretty. I want to eat your liver. No. I was just like, wait a minute. This is Carolina Beach. This is not, <laughs> this is not some crazy foreign country. Um, turns out the T-virus is real because he started twitching after that, and I carefully walked away and saw him attack a seagull. I love Carolina Beach. There are so many drugs there, <laughs> obviously. Oh, they, they flashed the red light at me. I'm scared now. Do I stop? Do I stop? Do I stop? Kidding. You guys have a great night. Thank you for almost laughing at me. Up, have a great night. Yes, sir. Hey, buddy, hey, Guru. I know you spoke. Amanda man. J, everybody. All right. You guys still with me? Having a good time? Awesome. We have a few more left, and then we'll be, uh, we'll be uh, to the funny people. Cameron. I meant Cameron. I should have said Cameron. I'm, I can't wait to hear you. All right, let's. I'm just fucking around. Let's go. Uh, this next person to come to the stage uh, is every Wednesday night. Nut House Improv Troupe, 9 p.m. Please put your hands together for Colton Demonte. <laughs> Colton, motherfucking Demonte. What's up, y'all? 
What's going on? <laughs> How you guys doing? Cameron? Doing fucking great. What's up, guys? You're fucking quiet as shit. You look like you're going to shit your pants, man. <laughs> you already did. Classic. You got me. <laughs> How's everyone doing? Just, uh, okay, we're doing all right. Um, man, I don't give a fuck. Uh, so let's do some shit. Who are you texting there? <laughs> Boom, I'm watching. I'm watching, you motherfucker. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I got cock blocked the other day. No. What the fuck are you wanting about? Gay. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> oh, man, I can't even do a joke. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so I got cock blocked. At least I think I did. I've never been cock blocked before. Um, I was with a group of guy friends, and this girl walked up, and she looked very aggressive. She had a very aggressive demeanor. And she walked up and she like tried to punch me and my friend pulled out his dick and was like, no, cock block! <laughs> I was like, wax on, wax off, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, man, these are old jokes. Let's do some old shit. My Speaking of old people, I used to work at Landfall Country Club. Yeah! yeah! <laughs> <laughs> fucking the only guy I ever worked with. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe you're here. I'm so happy. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. So I, I found out that old people can't hear very well. I know that's a fact. I didn't realize they can't fucking talk either. They can't fucking say shit. I used to be a busser, and I went to take this plate from this woman, and she was like, hey, it's your spider star with some last spider me. You're a spider has my plate. It's so what you say. <laughs> and her husband was like right next to her, and he was like, do what the lady said. <laughs> you fucking heard her. Slave. And I was like, I was like, ma'am, can I borrow your hearing aid? I can't fucking hear what the fuck you're saying. So maybe if I have some aids for hearing, it's a new thing I'm trying to do. I'm just putting other words in front of other words. <sighs> Sorry, I'm really fucked up right now. Um, oh my god, I can't do this. Um, hang on. What was that? <laughs> nice. Thanks, bro. <laughs> I know it was fucking nice. Uh, let's do some jokes. Um, let me knock this chair over real quick. <laughs> Piece of shit. <clears throat> um, so uh, the, I'm going to tell you a true story. The first time I ever put on a condom... I did because my dick looks exactly like that. <laughs> Thin and s rectangular. <laughs> exactly how iPhones work. Uh, shit, I totally lost track. Uh, Thanks, man. What's your name, dude? Matt what? Matt <laughs> What'd you Matt say? What? Matt Slat? <laughs> we all get it, right? It's a little inside joke. What? What do you do, man? I used to be fat. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So you eat for a living, or you used to eat for a living? Is that what you're telling me? No, seriously. What do you? What do you fucking? What do you do, man? Tell me the fucking truth right now. <laughs> what do you fucking do, man? Seriously. We're all partying here. What do you do, man? Fucking tell me. Don't. What do you jerk dudes off for a living? Is that what you do? You don't want to tell me? <laughs> yeah, I jerk dudes off. <laughs> Come on, man, tell me. You don't need to be funny, man. I'll be funny for you. <laughs> tell you what. You tell me what you do, and I will be funny. He collects horse shit. He collects horse shit. <laughs> Sounds shitty. <laughs> Am I right? Seriously. <laughs> Woo! Airline food, right? <laughs> Thanks for working with me, man. I'm Colton Damati. Thank you very much. Coach in the Monte, everybody. Yes. All right. Here we go. We got a few more left. This next person coming to the stage uh, is uh, on my list here, and I'm going to talk to you kind of like I know what I'm doing while I'm looking down the list uh, to see what number I'm on. Next person to come to the stage. Oh, yeah, I know now. Mr. DJ, please put your hands together for Bishop. So uh, I just got back from Vegas, and uh, Vegas is a city of odds, okay? It is a city of odds. Now, if you're playing blackjack, the odds are that the uh, dealer, if he doesn't have 17, the odds are you'll win, okay? All right? On the rule at will, always bet black because odds are it wins more, okay? Craps, the odds are great for playing at the craps table as well. If you just paid a hooker $100 to blow you, and you gave her 200 to come back with another condom, odds are she's not going to come back with another condom. <laughs> just need, you, know, you guys need to know that kind of thing. <laughs> not that I know. I'm just telling you guys. She normally doesn't come back. And you normally wait in your room for 30 minutes thinking... That this girl that fucks other guys for a living is going to come back when she leaves your room. She probably won't come back. <laughs> Even if you call her up, hey, Katie, um, you're coming back to the room, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, baby, I'm coming back to the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They waited 15 more minutes. Hey, everything's cool, right? Coming back to the room. Oh, no, actually, I got held up by security. I'm such a whore that they know me around these parts, and uh, I won't be able to come back, but I'll come back at 11 o'clock. Not that I know. I'm just letting you know that's hypothetical. <laughs> also, uh, I'm trying to dress a little better as well. Not for myself, but for you guys, so you won't be confused when I'm dead in five years. You guys ever go to a funeral, and the guy's dressed up way better than you've ever fucking seen him before? Like, this is the same guy that's had the same pair of sweatpants for fucking 10 years. Holes all in him. His balls would always hang out whenever you play video games. But Because he's going to see Jesus. He's dressed up in a fucking sports coat. This is the same guy that wouldn't wear a shirt when he's frying bacon. He's got bacon, bacon fucking scars all over him. But he's wearing a suit and tie to be buried in. I just, I just don't get it. I just don't get it. This is the same guy. That when he'd run out of toilet paper, he would use an old sock to wipe his ass. But he's dressed up. Really? You guys never use a sock? No? <laughs> Am I the only person that's used a sock to wipe my ass before? <laughs> God, you guys are a bunch of fucking liars. Jesus Christ. I know I'm not the only person that's ever used my sock to wipe my ass. No? No? Real shit. Real shit. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Well, you guys have been wonderful tonight. Seriously. You guys have been wonderful. And uh, that's actually all I had. So thank you guys very much. And have a good night. Keep it going for Louis Bishop. Yeah. 
You can see us on our YouTube channel. Uh, it's called Cock Talk with, with Timmy and Bishop, uh, which is a true... We, do, we interview the comics. You want to go see... We interview the comics that come through on the weekend, and we have a little interview show. So me and Louie, you'll check us out. All right, this next guy coming to the stage, uh, he, this is his first time here at Nutshery Comedy Room. You guys ready for him? First timer. We love first timers. Please put your hands together for the very funny Ace. Yes, bring him up. Bring him up, bring him up, bring him up, bring him up, bring him up. What? To my left. Look at that. All right, all right. All right, how are y'all tonight? Dude, man, got a lot of the tiger suit, man. Got a lot of the tiger suit. Man, you fucked it up. I'm telling you, man, you got on some old ass Chuck Taylors over there. But shit, I can dig it. You look at you, you know, girls, you know, would dig to tell. But you know what, though? Yeah, thank you, a douchebag. Don't go there, okay? Don't go there. But, um, yeah, dude, my man, my man, my man, godly. Mm. If I was in Boston, bro, I wouldn't even have no beans, but you were all right, okay? But um, my name is Lamont. I go by the name of Ace, Ass Central Entertainment. That's what you call me. But um, I'm about to do something called Variety as a stand-up comedy. I'm talking about everything. I'm talking about white, black, Hispanic. It don't, mean, it don't even matter. You know, white people, you know, they're kind of all like this right here. You know, you walk in the office, you know. Oh, there goes Tom. Let's give this motherfucker a check and forget about the man on the street. You know? I mean, you, you find a homeless person on the street, I mean, they pretty sure you got a fucked up job yourself. You know, you're working 9 to 5. They probably working from 10 to 12 in the morning. And y'all coming over here, you know. You're acting like y'all got, y'all got the damn bins. Y'all got the fucking United States of America Army. But these motherfuckers don't have shit but a goddamn tote bag and a motherfucking hand paper to wipe their ass with. But I'm going to keep it real with you. Me, you see, I ju I'm just fucked up. I don't, I don't even know my fucking name. I mean, you look at me, I was homeless for two years. But if you want the motherfuckers who don't give a damn, call your mama and you ask her who your fucking family was and go back in history and say, well, goddamn, my family just all fucked up because of the political shit that's going on in the comedy. But, you know, I ain't even going there because Bush, you know, he, his dumb ass, you know, we, the oil man, you know, you know, that's what I say too. All right, we got a winner over here. But, you know, Bush and Sarah Palin, they might as well fuck in the room and just get it over with, don't you think? Because they both, they, you know, they got the same identities, you know. Oh, they go to red light. That's my time. My name is Ad Central Entertainment. I will be back with more jokes next week. Drug trade, die from drugs over there. They die from what we buy from drugs. The diamonds, the chains, the brace. Here we go, race. I thought my Jesus piece was so harmless. Till I seen a picture of a shorty armless. And he God damn, girl. what is this? Look at that. It's like I knew what I was doing, Emily. You see that? I just you see, I threw that little this, this, and then went this way right there. All right, this next guy coming to stage uh, is always very funny. Um, he was coming down here a couple years ago for the first time I saw him. Please put your hands together for Mr. Cameron. Yeah, bring him up. Cameron. Excited people, fuck the energy's low in here. Come on, guys, let's get, let's get in shin splints, man. We're gonna, we're gonna. Woo! All right, motherfucker. No, it's too hot. Fuck yeah, baby. Hey, you guys ready to laugh? Let's give it up for Nut Street Comedy Room, everybody. Woo! Clap. Let's give it up for America. Woo! Give it up for smoking weed when you want it. Woo! Give it up for Timmy! Give it up for Charlie Sheen, everybody. Woo! I'm going to do a conversation between two, uh, two young guys, 19, who just got accepted into UNCW, and uh, they're from Charlotte. They're from Charlotte. They just got accepted. 
The UNCW, here's a conversation. You ready? Bro, bro, dude, bro, you ready, bro? Going to Dublin, bro, bro, we're going to Dublin, bro. It's going to be sweet, bro, dude. I cannot fucking wait, bro. My mom's got this place, and it's paid for for, like, all four years of college, dude. I don't got to pay rent one fucking day, bro. Listen, bro, I got an idea, bro. Bro, what's your fucking idea, bro? All right, dude, we're going to have our kitchen, right? Yeah, tile floors, duh. All right, we're going to have that shit. We're dedicating that shit to nothing but beer punk. Beer punk, beer punk, beer punk. All the PJ parties. Bitches love PJ parties, bro. All right, we're going to put Xanax and No Explode in that shit, bro. We'll fuck them up and they'll be strong. All right. Bro. PJ parties on the reg, all right? Dude, bro, dude, bro, 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 I got this poster of a girl playing beer pong with big tits. How do you feel about that, bro? Bro, dude, people will know we love beer pong and we love girls with big tits. Put it above the beer pong table, dude. Do you want people's feet to stick to the floor? Bro, we'll never clean the floor. It's always going to be sticky in there. All right, bro, but here's what I got a question for you, bro. Dude, I got like 14 Johnny Depp posters of him in the movie Blow Counting Money. Bro, I love money. I love Johnny Depp. Let's put one up in the living room, all right? Bro, what about Pink Floyd posters with the girl sitting by the pool? Bro, I got like four of those posters. Four of them. Line them down the hallway, bro. Dude, yeah. Bro, all of, we're going to line them down the hallway. Dude, but I got a problem, bro. Bro, what's your problem, dude? What's your problem? Tell it to me, dude. Because I'm cool. We're cool bros. All right, bro. I love drinking really expensive microbrewery beers, man. I love drinking them. We're going to drink them all the time, dude. It's not our money. Fuck it. We'll drink them all the time. Listen, but I want people to know we drink them, bro. Bro, put them on the shelf when we're done. Let's just put that shit up on the shelf. Everybody will know we drink that beer, bro. What about liquor, bro? We get done with liquor? Man, put the liquor in between the beers, fill it with some kind of glowy shit. We'll have black light parties, bro. It's going to be the tits, man. Holy shit, dude, do you love Labradors? I fucking love Labradors. Let's get a Labrador, man. He'll be running around the parties. People come over, whose dog is this, bro? It's our dog, bro. Do you feed it? No, dude, but we blow smoking weed in his ears, and we get him high. Oh, dude. Blow smoke in his ears, bro. He's so hot. Oh my god, look at the dog. He's so hot. Oh, let's get talking about here. The dog's so hot. Oh my god, dude. This is gonna be sweet, bro. Let's kick a fucking hole in the wall, cause that's what will make it really cool looking in here. It'll show him we'd rage every now and then. Ha! Ah, dirty couches, nice TV, holes in the wall, man. I'll tell you what the best way to get a girl not to like you. I was on a date with this girl the other night. Sick was like. This girl was like, she was like, huh, I got the cutest dog. My dog is so cute. He's like, I can just take him. I run the loop with him. It's super cute. And I was like, yeah, and I didn't want to be with her at all. I didn't want anything to do with this bitch. So I was like, I was like what the fuck am I going to do to make her not like me? I was like, what am I going to do? So I was like, I got it. Laugh without smiling. Next joke comes up. So my dog, when I give him a treat, he looks like he's smiling. I went, <laughs> dog do he's like uh, he does some other stuff oh! Oh! <laughs> I hate when girls have orgasms some guys were like I hate it when my girl fakes orgasms man she fakes them sucks man she's always faking orgasms bruh bruh dude she's always over my Scarface poster faking orgasms and shit Looking at my Scarface posters and my American History X posters in my room. Faking her orgasms, looking at Edward Norton. And I was like, dude, I love it. I fucking prefer it when a girl fakes an orgasm. Because I hate when girls do have orgasms. Because you know when you give a girl an orgasm. Because a girl, when you give a girl an orgasm, she's going to do this. And if any of you in here, women, give it up. Women who's had orgasms, say, woo! There you go. Good. Three women have had orgasms in here. <laughs> There's like 78 guys and like 12 women in here. All right. Well, when a girl really has an orgasm, you'll know that she has an orgasm because she's going to look at you the same way that you look at a cookout tray at 2 in the morning. <laughs> One of her fucking eyes is going to go that way. One fucking eye is going to go that way. And you're going to be fucking her. And she's gonna be she's gonna be squirting so hard that pussy juice is shooting up her badge crack into your eyeball. All right, <laughs> fuck man, come on. <laughs>
And she's going to be on. It's usually when she's on top. She's like, fuck me, fuck me. And then if you know girls like I know girls, most girls pull this goddamn number right here. So, um, I'm all done. Uh, you can go ahead and finish up, though. I don't mind. Uh, just, just, just finish up. I'm going to catch up on True Blood. Uh, it's getting deep. Snooky's, Snooky's real into it with Bill, and I don't know if that guy's a dog or if the dog is his friend. So, yeah, just you spit on it a little bit. You'll be okay. Yeah. I'm just going to watch True Blood, babe. That's all, that's all I want to do tonight. Thank you, guys. I'm Cameron Martin. Keep it going for Cameron, everybody! All right, we got two left. Can you make it? One person can make it. Two left. Two left. Hey, man, I didn't even notice those tiger pants. Those are awesome, dude. You and Charlie Sheen got that tiger blood. <laughs> no, are those hot, dude? Are they, they look hot. They're oh, are they really? Yeah. Cool. Are they real tiger? Dude, I got them on sale at Joanne's. Okay. <laughs> they got real tiger on sale at Joanne's. <laughs> cool, man. Uh, did you, like, hunt and kill that shit and make pants out of it? That's awesome, man. I'd wear that shit. Um, not now, because I don't want to be, like... That guy. Um, anyway, here we go. We got two left. Two left to go. Um, this next guy coming to the stage. Uh, man, you know what? Uh, actually, we're missing Harji, aren't we? Harji in here, is he? No. Okay. Sorry about that. All right. This next person coming to the stage uh, is uh, a, a good friend of mine, and he's one of the crowd favorites. Please put your hands together for Mr. Papa D. <laughs> Papa D. Give it up for Jamie. Get to running off at the night. Someone earlier was talking about watching cartoons while high. Let me tell you, I get fucked up on oxycodone because I can't afford weed. <laughs> I go to watching stupid cartoon. Everything is education, education, education today. I remember the days when her Wild E. Coyote always got his ass kicked by a roadrunner. Oh, that cross dressing fucking bunny. I always wonder what his sexuality is. I don't know if he's gay, bi, or lesbian. I could care less. <laughs> <laughs> right, I tell you what, I was watching Dora the Explorer, okay? I don't know why. I was fucked up. <laughs> now, I've watched closely, and you do this too, all right? When she starts singing, We Did It, Boots Eyes twitches just a tad bit. <laughs> <laughs> You know what he is thinking? Both of them in bed saying, we did it. <laughs> then he would be called pedophile boots. <laughs> this is an old uniform, old work uniform of mine. I still wear it because I like it. I don't give a damn if you don't. Well, maybe I do. Ah, fuck this. <laughs> fuck me. No, seriously. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> I've been in the hospital a lot, like most of my life, and one of my best memories was kicking a guy or one of the doctors in his left nut. It was in the middle of December and we were watching the Nutcracker Ballet. I give him an E for effort. 
He got his revenge on me. You want to know how? I got a liver transplant, okay? When I got my liver, I got the liver of a three-year-old. A three-year-old girl. Happy. A three-year-old... Nice laugh. <laughs> you feeling okay, buddy? You're not dying on me, are you? I'd expect that for Jeff Henderson's jokes, but not mine. Can I finish? Okay. <laughs> now, I got the liver of a three-year-old girl, a three-year-old black girl. Hey! That means I'm um, white chocolate with a dark, creamy filling. <laughs> Ladies, I'm available. Gay guys, I'll think about it. <laughs> all right, all right, last joke. <laughs> I some, when I walk into my house, I sometimes wonder why my dogs always bark at me. It's because I'm black, isn't it? <laughs> All right, it's no party without Papa D. Papa D, everybody! All right, last comic. You guys made it. You guys had fun? Awesome. We'll try to bring that same energy that we brought all night. This last comic is first time uh, down here. Please put your hands together for uh, Mr. Martin Bolin. Hey, 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 shut the fuck up. Look, 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 look at me. I'm extremely good looking. This jacket, about $86.50 at Dick's Sporting Goods. This haircut, $26.95. Great clips. Very expensive haircut. Look, look, look. Still a virgin. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. These exes. These exes. I'm still young. What's up? All right. Gangster. Gangster. People say they're gangster. Some people are. Some people aren't. How do we actually know if they are gangster? Well, I'll tell you. Don't do this, but I'm just telling you. Snitch on them. <laughs> just snitch on them. Be like, oh, shit. Hey, be like, just snitch on them. Just be like, hey, um, yeah, um, excuse me. Hey, I'm over there. He was talking about weed and guns. I think he might have it. In a couple days, the cop comes back to you and says, he didn't. Well, he wasn't gangster. Now, the cop comes back to you and says, you were right. You just busted the biggest drug dealer in Wilmington. Now you got to move to Nebraska, live on a farm, go into witness protection for the rest of your life. Well, shit, man, that guy was gangster as fuck. Holy shit. <laughs> gay, gay people. Some people are, some people aren't. But a real th the thing is, <laughs> even the people that aren't gay, every fucking guy does a gay term. They do something gay every once in a while. I'll tell you what. This is what they say. Every guy judges a guy. I swear to you. They'll be like, hey, man, yo, you know that guy over there? Yeah. You mean the guy getting all the girls? Yeah, man, that guy's really cool. So you mean he's hot? Is that, that's what you meant, right? Nah, man, I don't mean he's hot. Hey, did you see the movie Troy? Um, Brad Pitt, Yeah. Um, yeah, you remember that sh uh, scene where he was fighting people, he had his shirt off, he was sweating? Was he cool in that? Yeah, man, he was really cool in that, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, video stores. Video stores. Anyone go to the video stores anymore? No, you don't, because there's Netflix and there's Redbox. But that's not why I don't go to the video store. I used to like the video store. But I don't like them judging the movies I rent. All right, you go in the video store every time. You go in there, you're like, hey, hey. Hey, how you doing? Um, welcome to uh, Blockbuster. Oh, hey, man, here's my um, three movies. You got your Blockbuster card? Yeah, yeah, here they are. Okay. He's scanning the movies right now. And uh, first movie. Hmm. Good choice, good choice. Okay. <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> Hey, John, you 
can't believe it. This fucker just picked up. <laughs> he just picked up Ocean's 12. <laughs> what a fucking faggot. <laughs> I don't know what video store you guys go to, but they do that to me every fucking time. <laughs> All right, I'm Martin Bowen. Uh, have a good night. Yeah, Martin Bowen. That's awesome, man. Good job. All right, did you guys have fun? Yeah. Awesome. We do this every Thursday night. Give it up. A big round of applause to all the comics that came down. Yeah. They were awesome. So we do this every Thursday night. Uh, don't forget, Wednesday nights are also no cover charge. That's our improv night. And then this weekend, we have Andy Hendrickson. Um, from uh, New York City and uh, we uh, hope to see you as soon as we can so thanks again have a safe night and uh, we hope you had fun bye bye the future of mobile computing starts now